Okay, one dimensional collisions, inelastic collisions. Okay, so let's review what we looked at before. For a collision, then we have the following. Uh, if there's no external forces, or if the collision is very short, if there's no net external force, so on the system, so the system of the two cars, F net external equals zero, then delta P total equals zero. So this means the, P, the initial momentum, P1 total, before the collision, is equal to P2 total after the collision. Okay, so we derive that based on the momentum principle. So what's an inelastic collision? So suppose I have the following case. I'm gonna animate it with my animation graphics here. So here's car A, and this one's car B. See, it says B on there. So now that's how you know it's B. So let's say that this one's moving and this one's at rest, and it goes They stick together. So in an inelastic collision, the velocity of the two cars afterwards is the same. And it doesn't have to be that way. I mean, here's the first case. But it could be even like this. Say they're different masses, and it's going like that. And you can add the noises yourself. Uh, the noises are just for bonus, okay? So we're gonna first do this collision. Uh, equal mass cars, the simplest case, where they this one's at rest, and this one's moving with some velocity, and it crashes into it, and then they move along after we wanna find the final velocity. And then we're gonna do the generic case where the masses and velocities could be anything. And then, and then that'll be it, okay? But in an inelastic collision, that means they, they stick together. Now, in, in the case of these are train cars, they have a little coupler in there that sticks together. If it was a piece of clay thrown at a wall, it would just kind of like plop there and stick. So not everything is an inelastic collision, uh, but this, this is. Okay, so I know the momentum before, let's use this case of uh, in the X direction, and the initial velocity is of the car A is some value, VA1, in the X direction, and that one's zero. So I can say P initial total, it's, and this is in the X direction. That's why it's one dimensional. P initial total is going to be the mass of A times VA1 plus the mass B times its velocity of zero, it's not moving. And then P2 total afterwards, they're gonna be stuck together with some new velocity. I'll call that, let's say, stuck together. And let's say it moves with the velocity V2. Well, I could call it VA2, because VB2 has the same thing, okay? So it's gonna be MAVA2 plus MBVB2 and that's that. But these two are stuck together. So VA1, VA2 equals VB2. So I'm just going to put this as VA2. So this is going to be VA2 times MA plus MB. Now I can set the initial momentum equal to the final momentum, and I get MA VA1 equals M A plus M B V A two. I mean that's really it. But if I want to solve for the final velocity, I can divide both sides by M A B M A plus M B. I get V A two plus M A V A one divided by M A plus M B. And that is my final velocity if uh, car B is at rest. Now, let's just make sure this makes sense. If VA1 is moving in the positive x direction, the final velocity is in the x direction dimension because none of these masses are negative. So this is if this is positive, that's positive. Okay, it's going to be going slower than before because... If I have MA and then MA plus MB on the bottom, this number has to be less than one. So this is gonna be a fraction that multiplied by the initial velocity to give me a final slower velocity. 
but the units do work out. I have mass over mass that cancels. I get meters per second. One more thing. What if MB equals zero? If this is a massless car, then it shouldn't have any impact on the momentum of this. And in fact, if I put an MB equals zero, MAs cancel. Okay, now let's do the generic case. So let's do the same thing, but now I know the, I have A, B, and this is before the collision, VA1 is going this way. Let's say VAB, VB1 is going the same way. It doesn't really matter. And this is just an X direction, but I'll put vectors over it. And then that's my symbol for they collided. So afterwards, they're stuck together. And then this is VA2, and this is VB2. And they have different masses, okay? So I can do the same thing. The initial momentum is gonna be MA VA1 plus MB VB1 equals M A V A two plus M B V B two, but I'm going to write this as V A two. So assuming I know all of these values, the initial velocities, I can find the final velocity V A two. So let's just factor out the V A two M A plus M B, and then I'm going to divide both sides by this. I get V A two equals M A V A one plus M B V B one all of that over M A plus M B. Again, we can check. You know, this should give me the same answer as before. If V B one is zero, that whole term goes. I do get the same thing. Um, also, what if this is moving that way. If VB1 is moving that way, it's negative. So it's possible that this could be a negative momentum, negative velocity, if this value right here is greater than that. So if the initial momentum of this is greater in the negative direction than in that one in the positive direction, the final velocity will be that way. That makes sense. What if they have equal and opposite masses and equal and opposite velocities? So they come in like this. Well, they should just stop. So this says that if I have same mass, same and opposite velocities, then this term on the top becomes zero and I do get a zero velocity. Okay. Um, yeah. We could look at, and I'll look at this in another thing, but I want you to start thinking about it. What about the total kinetic energy before and the, is it equal to the total kinetic energy afterwards? Two. And no, it's not. Okay. And the initial total, the initial kinetic energy should be greater than the final, but we can do that in, in another video. Okay, so next we will do uh, inelastic collisions in 2D. I'll see you then.